All right, what's going on, guys? Trev back again, here to bring you another video. This one's gonna be doing another Walking Dead video leading up to the season nine finale this weekend of The Walking Dead. This one, we're gonna give our thoughts first on a couple of things regarding Rick. Uh, Andrew Lincoln saying that he left at the wrong time and then also uh, fan theories about his possible return. All right, so I thought this would be a good one to go ahead and give our thoughts on today, at least to start things off, because we got some new articles surrounding this one. Links will be in the description and all that usual stuff, as per usual. Then we'll get into some of your guys' Q&A questions afterwards for today's Daily Dead, so to speak. Um, so this one I thought was kind of cool. Uh, the first part of it is that uh, Andrew Lickens says that he left at the wrong time. So let's read it through and we'll give our thoughts. It says, The Walking Dead Season 9 is about to wrap things up uh, with its finale this coming weekend. And while former protagonist Rick Grimes may have left the show all the way back in Episode 5, What Comes After, fans reckon the noble sheriff could be making a brief return before the credits roll in Episode 16, The Storm. There are evidence. Uh, the below image of from the finale, which shows uh, a technophile Eugene working on something, presumably the communication system has been trying to set up, or he's been trying to set up since uh, the mid-season finale, say the uh, Southern uh, Savant uh, finally cracks the code to his uh, pet project uh, radio in the next episode and manages to reach out to a faraway community Whose voice might we hear on the other end? Okay, so that's the one fan theory. And then the other one, which is kind of cool too, is um, so that's the possibility of him making a kind of audio only or hear some kind of uh, you know audio communication there with him, which would be really cool. So that's kind of the fan theory part of it. So we'll come back to that. And then the other part is that um, The Walking Dead star Norman Reedus says best friend and former series lead Andrew Lincoln agrees the long-running uh, zombie drama has undergone a creative renaissance under season 9 showrunner Angela Kang. It says, quote, uh, it's funny because I talked to Andy the other day, Reedus told Entertainment Weekly with a laugh, and he was like, man, I picked the wrong time to leave the show because it's so effing good right now. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you did, dude. Uh, you picked the wrong time. Uh, I love the risk she's taken. Rita's added of Kang, a writer-producer on the uh, series uh, since its sophomore season in 2011. So since season two, which is really, you know, I, that's basically the beginning anyway, because the first season was only six episodes, and we didn't even know if it was going to continue or be picked up or anything. So she's basically been there since the beginning pretty much, and... Um, She's done an incredible job. So let's give our thoughts first on him saying that he left the he, he picked the wrong time to leave. So uh, you know, personally for me, I think that that's this. It was basically perfect the way he the way he left. The way they were able to do it, where they worked it in as kind of a mini story arc. We have five episodes that are kind of surrounded with sort of the climactic leave of Rick from the series. I thought was basically perfect. It would have been really cool to see Rick during the uh, the Whispers story arc. But um, the thing about it is, is that you know, you, you want to have really good stuff after Rick leaves. So whenever you put Rick's leave, um, you kind of want to do it at like the best time. Because if you don't, then it could, because you're having your main lead leave the series since the very first season, if you don't follow it up with really, really good stuff, it could, it could backfire. It could really, really hurt the show. Because if you have him kind of abandon ship and have him leave and go to the movies and do do the things that they're doing with that, which is awesome. You know, I'm really looking forward. I can't wait to 2020. If you guys missed the video this week, we did a video on that. We have some new news for the um, for the release. I'll have it in the end videos. Watch it after this one if you missed it. Uh, 2020 is when we're going to see uh, the Walking Dead movie most likely um, uh, air, the release for it. So next year is going to be a great year. Watch that video if you don't know what I'm talking about because we went through all the details of that already. But you, you kind of want to leave, at least with regards to the show as a whole, you kind of want to have him leave at the strongest point because after that you want to follow it up with really, really strong stuff. You don't want to have him leave and then have a mediocre story arc or like a filler story arc and then the whole the whole audience decides, okay, this show was good up until up until Rick left and then it just bombed after Rick left because that, that that's very common. You know, when you have series where the, the main cast or the series lead leaves and then afterwards you don't follow it up with really amazing stuff, then the audience is going to leave too. So I think in this case... He pretty much left. Maybe they're saying it kind of a way where, like, because the stuff is so good after, it would have been cool to see him uh, play it through. But 
you know, and it would have been really cool to see that had he have just stayed in the series uh, going forward. But it's really cool what they're doing too, where they are taking some risks to do the movie, and they're they're kind of swishing things up a bit. And uh, just based on this conversation, I'm kind of sitting here because th- I kind of knew this would happen, right? Like once he leaves, because he's been on the show so long, so many years, working so hard as as Rick in the series. Once he leaves, it's going to be at first, it's going to be like a relaxing breath of fresh air. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be cool. But then before too long, he's going to get bored, right? <laughs> as we all do. Uh, uh, and he's going to think, oh, man, it would have been really cool to be in that part. So, um, like, for example, the Alpha versus Daryl scene, or the Alpha Daryl face off scene in the finale, or in episode 15, it's not quite exactly the finale, but 15, the one we just saw, uh, where Alpha shows Daryl her in the TV series version. In the comics, Alpha showed Rick the same thing, but Alpha shows Daryl her zombie nuke, as I like to refer to it as, or her, her mega zombie horde that she can steer into your communities right <laughs> like separate it up like she could literally like think about how amazing this is this huge group she could literally have three whispers go and take different sections of the group to the different communities simultaneously so she could literally have the those those zombie herds wind up at the gates of every community in the same day so think about how devastating that could be what what she has and why you know they pretty much have to right now kind of surrender or kind of not fight back right now at the beginning, right? So, um, yeah, man, this, this is really good stuff. Uh, maybe maybe if he saw that scene or you know, some of the scenes he's seen, like the uh, Beta versus Daryl scene, uh, you know, he'd say, oh, it would have been cool to do that. And it's true. It would have been cool to see Rick in those positions or at least involved with the story uh, during those parts. But at the same time, um, it's really good that he left while the show was still, while they brought an awesome season at the same time. Like, it's good that he didn't leave and then them follow it up with not strong content so then the audience would just abandon ship as well, too. Because that was a big question, is how how is everyone going to react when you don't have Rick in all these episodes? You know, because we're used to basically having him there all the time. Now you have all these episodes, he's not there. So um, how does the audience respond to that? And I think for sake of the audience, it was almost perfect the way they had him go and then continue on the show bringing the whispers so strong at the start having some big deaths right away with jesus there at the mid-season finale and then this recent stuff here really crazy at the end um so those are kind of my thoughts on on that one but yeah you know i think that's uh, totally normal and i can't wait to see him return to play rick in the movies anyway so that could be very cool and i'm not you know i, I know that they've said that he said categorically he'll never return to the walking dead tv series but i'm sitting here thinking to myself i'm like I don't know, you know, <laughs> I'm not, I, you know, there's the movies, and we'll see what happens with the movies, and we'll see what he wants to do, and, and that'll be, by the time they're finished all three movies, that will be in the future quite a while. 2020 will be the premiere for the first movie, and then the second movie after that will probably be either 2021, like the next year, or 2022, and then the, the movie after that would be probably 2023, or something like that, like if it's 2020 to start, or maybe 2024, because the movie's Maybe we can't expect a movie every year. Maybe there'll be a year and a half or two years between at least one of the movie releases. Maybe the last one if it's a big, uh, big movie. Um, so, you know, this will keep Andrew Lincoln busy until 2024. And by that time, anyway, the Walking Dead television series will be totally different anyway. So he said categorically he's never going to return. But I still kind of think like, you know, maybe maybe somehow they could have him come back for just something or who knows. Uh, and we'll see also, it's possible that the movie thing might not work out. So we'll see what they want to do and if they decide to change their mind in the future, which they always could, you know, people, unless it's contractually already set out, uh, people could always change their minds. And even if it is, if the, the actor or the person involved wants to play ball, sometimes they can even change contracts if they're okay with doing it, right? So uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you think we'll ever see Rick back in the Walking Dead TV series again? Like, not the movies. Do you think we'll ever see him back, whether it be a voice return or something like that? Do you think we'll ever see him back in the TV series uh, uh, again? We'll see. Um, So the other part about the uh, fan theory about maybe hearing his voice on Eugene's radio when he fixes the radio, uh, that could be really cool. So this is kind of a uh, sort of a fan theory right now. Games Radar has the uh, has the uh, uh, lowdown on this one. You guys can read it through if you want. But basically, there's the picture of Eugene fixing the radio, and some people think that once he gets the radio up and running, that they may hear Rick's voice. Now that could be a really good one for uh, Michonne if Michonne is to leave in season ten. So if Michonne's going to leave in season ten, if she even hears one word from Rick or in Rick's voice on a radio. 
nothing will be able to stop her from leaving to go look for him, right? So I think that could be something we might be able to see again. You know, we never would have thought we would see Rick and uh, Carol and some of the others in an episode of Fear the Walking Dead, but we did. The Fear the Walking Dead season four premiere, they had sort of a cameo beginning type of uh, appearance for Morgan. Um, so... Yeah, man, that was that was really cool. So I don't think we can put it past them to see in the future what what is going to happen exactly. And even though he said he'll never return to the Walking Dead TV series, I don't know if uh, if that's necessarily 100% going to be the uh, the case. We'll see. Leave comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And of course, look forward to the movies and check out the 2020 uh, video if you guys haven't seen that one. So for today's Q and A questions, uh, Pete Kip says, "Unleash the Negan Redemption story begins now." That's true, man. It looks like Negan is out now, right? So he's out of his cell. He's dressed in warmer clothing. It looks like he's with them. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm just wondering, the group that we see in the finale, it's really strange to me because it looks like it looks like there's only a few from each community that are there. It's almost like, did the communities just capsize? Like, we know that the kingdom has basically shut down. But after what Alpha did... Did the rest of the communities just, like, everybody just get terrified and just leave? Like, did everyone just abandon ship? Because I'm almost looking at the communities right now thinking to myself, like, are they all still up and running in the same way they were before the events of episode 15? And I almost think, like, probably not. Um, this one's really crazy, man. So we'll see in what capacity the hilltop is still running and Alexandria is still running in the wintertime. But I'm also not sure why I have to make this journey and travel through the... Um, you know, uh, the Whisper's territory. Uh, like, what is it that, that, you know, that they need to do that for? Are they totally out of resources? Did people cut and run? Did everybody just cut and run? Uh, and if they did, man, that's going to make for some, some amazing stuff going forward. And the Whispers might last even longer than I thought they would if the groups have lost, like, a majority of their survivors. But Negan still being there is cool, and it's going to be sweet to see Negan out and about there with the others. Um, because, again, Rick's not there, so so we do have some space there for, for that. So that'll be really cool. Uh, Mickey's and Maggie's not there, too, so it's, so, so it's not as bad, right? She won't want to beat him up every turn or strangle him or something. Uh, or Mikey says, uh, I was shocked about Enid. I expected Alden instead. I actually cried because of The Walking Dead for the first time in a long while, especially when they showed the flashbacks of them fighting at the end. Yeah, that was really sad. For me, the one that got me visually... Oh, we got a train going. It's Terminus right now. <laughs> uh, for me, the one that got me the most was when Henry was looking and he sees Alpha kind of come in and he's just like like looking there. And it's just... Oh, man, that is really... Um, that's really scary, man, for him. I mean, <laughs> I just, you know, I can hardly remember at this point in my life being like a teenager, but, uh, you know, that is one scary uh, girlfriend's mom who's coming in who doesn't appro unapproving girlfriend's mom, right? <laughs> That's for sure. Billionaire Ballers Club says uh, they can't show that on TV, man. So about the uh, alpha, um, you know, actually decapitating everybody. Well, they've shown some stuff recently, like in the Whispers episode there where alpha, the, the several Whispers that alpha killed, the one in the neck, and then the one with the razor wire, um, those were pretty brutal. So they did show some brutal scenes, but I do agree with you to a degree that they probably can't show Alpha decapitating Henry and stuff like that. It's probably a little too brutal. Or, like if you look at the episode prior with the uh, the kids versus Michonne, there are certain things that they kind of danced around and they cut on purpose, which makes sense because, um, you know, it's a difference between... Um, people were mentioning HBO and The Red Wedding, where that's a subscription service type channel, this is a cable TV type station with AMC, so it is a little bit different. And you're right, there's some things they can't they can't uh, show. So yeah, um, Matthew uh, Latender says, uh, well, Tara had a good run of five years, and that's true. You know, in the end, now that she's gone, she did have a good run of, of five years in the show, season four to season nine. Um, that's a long time for Walking Dead. A lot of people did not think she would survive on that long. And keep in mind that a lot of these different characters, such as Tammy and some of those like that, or Milton, I always use him as an example, from season three, a lot of them are season characters. They come in near the beginning of the season, and they last until the end of the season or at some point in the season, and they don't come back for the next year. So it's really cool that Tara was able to kind of break out of that, and she was a character that came in as part of the governor's story, but she wasn't just a season four character. She was a character that actually survived on way longer than everyone thought, and um, 
even lighter own episodes with uh, Swear, uh, with Heath, and uh, you know, with the Hilltop after that. Really cool. I'm Joker28 says, when you think about it, it was Henry's fault for going after Lydia in the first place. And that's true, right? <laughs> it was kind of Henry's fault. And it was Lydia's fault as well, too, for allowing him to do so. And, um, you know, well, look what happened. It was pretty, pretty savage. But you can't fault them for doing it, though. You know, they're just kids. They don't know. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, love makes you do crazy things sometimes, right? Uh, Rod Super 1213 says, uh, at the end, Lydia is going to kill Alpha, not Carol. So some people think that Lydia might be the one to kill her mother, that might be able to kill Alpha. I wonder how she could because um, unless she's able to get her shotgun away from her or something and, and blast her with a shotgun or, or somehow you know, assassinate her or something, it, it would be tricky. I don't think that Lydia would be able to take down Alpha hand-to-hand. Uh, like if she had a knife or something and she attacked Alpha with it, I don't think it would work. Uh, I just don't. Um, but we'll see how things go. Mega Nerd says, uh, Ozzy, Alec, DJ, Tammy, Rose, Rodney, Addy, Frankie, Enid, Tara, and Henry. So he listed out. I want to thank him for listing out the, um, the victims of the... Uh, of the uh, pike scene uh so that we could do some of the videos this week um the wiki also has it too but yeah thanks megan for that earlier on the week he pointed out mark adams says no leader for the hilltop uh you think maggie will be coming back you know we have to see what capacity the communities are still running uh i would think that alexandria and hilltop have got to be running to some degree they might just be short smaller in terms of numbers but, uh, yeah, I think they're still running in. I hope Maggie will come back next year, but that's if Whiskey Cavalier doesn't get renewed. Otherwise, she might just come back for a quick stint, uh, maybe an episode or two, and we'll see what that looks like. Jack Olber says, uh, I don't think any of us had a clue uh, they had a horde like that uh, for the Whispers. Uh, that's reminiscent of the horde that broke into Alexandria. Yeah, that's true. It, there's a lot of similarities between the Season 6 horde that was in that uh, canyon type of area that Rick found and the others with the trucks that had them blocked in and uh, this horde here. But I, I do get the sense this one is probably bigger than that one. And the amount she has is just crazy. I mean, it's like, um, you know, it's probably more than 30,000 or something like that. It's probably an unbelievable amount of walkers. And if she uses them with their ability to navigate them and their strategy, she is very clever. And that's how she's basically defeated the survivors so far, even trapping their leaders in the season uh, in episode 15 there, uh, you know, with Daryl and the others kind of following that, uh, that trap back that they set. The Whispers are very crafty. They are savages, but they're also very smart too. And uh, Alpha is very clever. She makes good decisions, and she's very tricky. She's not so easy to... Um, to best or to defeat, and she's got some great strategies here for how to use the dead to her advantage uh, with the mass and everything, and it's it's kind of amazing what she's been able to figure out. Definitely our survivors were not prepared to deal with them. And the last one will be from uh, E. Garcio, who says, uh, Trav, did you notice uh, Alpha made a point of telling Ezekiel uh, she's looking forward to meeting the queen, Carol? I hope this is foreshadowing a face-off between the two. I'd love to see uh, Carol kill her, especially now that Alpha has killed her son. So, yeah, I think that's the one that, that everybody kind of wants to see most. Uh, it'd be cool for Lydia but or Negan or someone like that if they can send someone in to try to take her out. Um, but I think that Carol would be the best one to do it. Carol would absolutely be the best one to do it of anybody. Uh, maybe she goes undercover. Maybe she puts on a skin or something like that. And Carol goes in and uh, takes out Alpha. That would be so cool, man, to see. So that's what I'm hoping to see uh, maybe next year, season 10. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, the possibilities of Rick ever returning, um, even by voice if it is. Um, the... The question of him leaving and what and the timing, do you think it was the right time? Yeah, I think it was the right time, uh, personally, even though it would have been fun to see him in, you know, later on. But you, know, you got to do what you got to do. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, good stuff for the uh, the questions today. Keep sending me some for tomorrow or the next day. And we'll do another video leading up to the season uh, finale uh, just a couple days now. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, thumb it up below. As always, this is Trev. And I'm saying peace. I'll see you guys again soon.